to bring in Mo Hussein, who's the president of Edelman Global Advisory UK and was the former chief press officer for Prime Minister David Cameron. He joined me uh, here in London. Great to see you again, Mo. Let me get your thoughts, first Hi. of all, on what we heard from the PM. Well, it felt like a very uh, genuine uh, statement from him where he was talking directly to the electorate and to the voters. Clearly, you have not had a chance to vote for him, but I think he wanted them to understand that uh, he got the challenges they are facing, the huge economic challenges, and he wanted to bring back stability and confidence. And he said that. And crucially, he did something that Liz Truss never did, where he acknowledged that mistakes had been made over the last few weeks and the disruption, the huge disruption that had caused uh, for people. And he was taking steps to address that, which I think will go quite a long way as well. And there were also a few uh, snipes in there, I think, as well. Uh, they, they sounded very positive and friendly, but I think he made his point. So when he spoke about former, former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, he praised him, he said he achieved great things, but then he also spoke about governing with integrity and uh, talked about honesty. And I think this was an attempt to draw some clear water between the new Sunak administration and previous administrations. Yeah, it, it was a pretty, I, from what I heard, you know, solemn tone, very professional. And like you said, Mo, underscores, is it not, the challenges if he, he faces. What do you make then, Mo, of the cabinet he's put forward? Some of them uh, are very familiar faces to, to people here in the country, but there's one that reflects unity in your view. Well, I think the ethos here is keep your friends close and your enemies closer. <laughs> he, he definitely had to uh, play the unity card. There were a lot of people uh, who did support him, MPs, but there are factions who still are uh, somewhat questioning of him. There are the people who are very loyal to Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, who, if they're on the back benches, can cause a lot of problems for him. There is the right of the party. You want stronger action on immigration and other uh, issues and the appointment of, or the reappointment of someone like Suella Braverman, who is from that group, uh, I think is quite telling as well. And I think there were some reappointments, Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, other familiar faces where mm. experience is a premium, people who have done this before in many departments, and also not disrupting the system. We've had a lot of economic shocks and disgruntled markets over the last few weeks. I think this was a very safe cabinet, experienced old wise hands, uh, that will hopefully uh, chart a different course. Experience old wise hands. He also promised uh, today, as he addressed, of course, the country, Mo, to deliver on the manifesto that won, of course, the Conservatives that election in 2019, including, of course, a promise to level up the country. How is he going to do that with this huge hole in public finances, Mo? Because that's going to be the real challenge, is it not? This will be, this will be the, the big challenge now facing him and his government. When he spoke, he, he, he'd asked people to look back at his record in the pandemic and how he had stepped in and how he had shown compassion and that's how he'll govern going forward, which I think is very worthy and noble, but there will be very difficult choices he has to make. And there's a big difference between being a chancellor in the pandemic where you have to rightly spend a lot of money and mm. intervene to safeguard jobs and businesses and what we see going forward because of the dire economic situation in the UK where challenging decisions and unpopular decisions will have to be made. And I think part of the cabinet makeup reflects that because you appoint your cabinet when you want to bind people into those decisions, not just have them sniping and plotting against you from the back benches. So there will be collective decisions and he will have to walk a political tightrope because there will still be different parts of the party who are looking for different things, more investment in a certain uh, sector of the economy, more defence spending, uh, less intervention in other ways. So the issues haven't really changed just because the Prime Minister has changed and the economic situation hasn't changed either. But we do have somebody who I think understands it better. Uh, but dif difficult decisions, I'm afraid, are going to be part and parcel of what he has to deal with. Yeah, and he hinted at that. And, and finally, if, Mo, if you were advising uh, the Prime Minister, the new Prime Minister, given everything we've gone through, three Prime Ministers in seven weeks, what would you advise? What would you recommend at this, at this juncture? 
I think showing competence and experience is going to be really, really crucial here. We, everybody goes into Downing Street wanting to do the big things, the radical things. Yeah. But actually, I think now we just need a period of calm and a period of certainty. And over time, you probably can make the bigger changes. But at the moment, I think there are immediate challenges, not least, uh, you know, he's got a big in-tray what's going to happen with energy bills, how he's going to turn the economy around, how he's going to unite the party. So I think he has to be a bit uh, steadying the ship and taking things more day by day rather than coming in with a big vision and uh, you know, a big desire for change, which is what we saw from the last prime minister, and it didn't really work out. A colossal task, no doubt. Mo Hussein, always great to get your insight. Thanks, Mo. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm.